Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we are talking to Stephanie Winslow today. She is an author and a speaker, and she just recently uh, wrote a book called The Ascent to Hope, The Rugged Climb from Fear to Faith. Uh, Stephanie is a wife to Marshall for 14 years and the mom to two sweet and lively daughters. And she's also an entrepreneur. She uh, started her own business called Blind Spot Consultants. So welcome from St. Louis today, Stephanie Winslow. Stephanie, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Well, we appreciate it. Obviously, with my title of Hope is Here, when I saw your book, is sent to Hope, and we have a mutual friend, Michelle Chudy, as I saw your topic, uh, title of your book, uh, and did a little research on it. I was really blessed by it. But if you will, share with our listeners, uh, what, what, what's your book about? Why did you write this book? Uh, my book um, is written um, for families, Christian families, who are struggling uh, with a loved one who is bound by addiction. And um, what I found in my life uh, with the loved one that in our family who had been really struggling is that um, I thought I needed to take on the role of God and play God in his life and um, be his savior. And so God worked <laughs> a great deal in my heart um, and helped me to a place where I you know, got to the end of myself and uh, realized that I, I couldn't control anything that I was trying to control and um, helped me release the death grip <laughs> that I had on a lot of the situations that were going on um, and ultimately exposed my need for more of God. Um, so I wrote the book. Um, really, I felt called uh, to share the story because I know um, there's just a growing epidemic, right, of people who are struggling with addiction. And whether it's a substance abuse or whether it's food or shopping or gambling, you know, the, the addiction itself, it doesn't really matter. Um, but how we respond to it um, can mean all the difference for us and our, as a loved one who's dealing with someone, um, can make all the difference uh, because we can get sucked into the same sort of behaviors um, that the addict has and um, and, and really just f feel hope, hopeless. And that's really where I was. I was in a, a pretty dark place and um, didn't feel like there was any uh, any hope for me, for my family members. And um, so then God started turning my head and lifting my eyes up toward him. And um, that's where the ascent comes in because he helped lift me out of that dark pit uh, and start climbing out uh, on that mountainside uh, toward him. Well, addiction is such a... Uh like you said, a prevalent, prevalent thing in our culture here in the United States, even though we live in the probably the most blessed materially country in the world, there's still, still so many things that people do use to fill that God-sized shape hole in his heart that only he can fill. And you kind of talked about it earlier, whether you know it could be gambling, pornography, uh, it could be shopping, it could be workaholism. I mean, the list of uh, food, the list goes endless. And yet, even for people that are followers of Jesus, uh, it's still always that fine line, isn't it, when you have a loved one between trying to help them but also enabling them, isn't it? It is. It's a difficult line. Um, and I think um, that what I found for myself is that I was doing all of the quote-unquote Christian things that I knew to do, you know, sending scripture, I was praying over him, and, um, but what I had failed to see, what my, I was blind to, was my own depravity, and that I, I could really see, um, there's a chapter in my book where I talk about that I see the stain on him, but totally missed, that I was uh, just in much of need of a loving Savior as my loved one who I was praying for. Um, and, you know, you almost get in kind of a self-righteous um, mindset when you're trying to reach out and help someone. Um, and so I think that's where God really just started to soften my heart 
and help me love and have compassion and understanding and empathy as opposed to trying to fix somebody. Well, and one of the things that uh, as I was preparing and I heard you talk about in the video about the book is that, you know, a lot of us are good at the religion thing with God and we do that well, but uh, through this process of dealing with a loved one with addiction and writing the book, uh, you found out instead of about re- religion, it was about relationship. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, like you said, I was I was pretty good at, at um putting on the got it all together face and I, I I'm I am a self motivated person, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm I'm driven to to do and to work hard and you know, and so my self sufficiency here uh, with this situation was really a detriment to me because I thought I could do it on my own and I lost my my own need um, for God. Uh, and so when I had this situation, you know, I'm a problem solver, and <laughs> I take pride in that. So when I couldn't solve this problem, um, God really showed me that he's the only one that can fix and heal and mend the hearts of men. And um, and so I needed to really lean on him, and he so gently uh, wooed me back toward himself and showed me how much that he loved me first, and I had to. I have to get that relationship right first um, before I can really be of any use to him um, in ministry. Well, it's interesting you say that. A uh, guy that's mentored me uh, for the past fifteen years, and uh, is just one of the most uh, disciplined and most. Uh, has the most depth of somebody spending time with Jesus that I know personally. Uh, he challenged me one time. He said, Greg, uh, one of the things I've learned is he said that when I get that vertical relationship right, that one, you know, uh, looking up to heaven, looking towards God, it's amazing how all the horizontal relationships, all the <laughs> relationships around me, how much better they go. Uh, did you find that to be true through this process? Absolutely. I, I think, um, Prayer, and the most important part of prayer is that it, you know, we, we, I think we pray to God and ask for Him to change things, change circumstances. But in His response, His grace to, back to us is that he, he changes us. He changes our heart toward the situation and toward our relationships with people. And so that we can love better, we can love deeper, we can love differently then we are able to do on our own and in our own strength. Um, Because my own own love is very short-sighted, and I, that's the difficult part, too, you know, about having an addiction is that the resolution for me was, so the sobriety that I was really praying and hoping for was about me, that I just wanted this thing, this hurdle to be done and over with so that my family didn't have to deal with it anymore. And when it got down to it, it wasn't really about me loving that person. It was about me being uncomfortable. Um, And so, like you said, that vertical relationship, when I finally got myself aligned to God and I focused first on Him, He took those tinted, uh, foggy glasses that I had on and started making them more clear. And I could see more clearly um, what my role was was and is uh, with the people around me just tuned in we're talking with stephanie winslow she is a author of a book called the ascent to hope the rugged climb from fear to faith and i'm in the process of trying to write a book myself and um, so i have great admiration that you have got that done so i'm going to ask for myself and i also know a lot of people that kind of have a dream maybe on their list of things to do before they go to heaven is to write a book how uh how did the writing process go for you stephanie um it it was very emotionally difficult and you know i think it depends obviously what topic that you're writing on and but there's everybody has a story and um i'm a firm believer that god put us on this earth to um and help we go through things so that we can then use that trial 
what we learned there to be a blessing to someone else and teach them. Um, and so I, the writing process for me was a really a healing process um, that I just had to wrestle with a lot of the emotions that I was still holding on to um, and even regrets and um, guilt that I was carrying about relationships that I had um, caused harm to or situations or words that I said that I, I needed to actually go and get forgiveness about. Um, it was a really, actually a very difficult process for, for me emotionally, um, but also very good in that it, it walked me through the healing process that I, I don't think if I would have written the book that I would have walked through that same healing process. Um, so it was just, it was a very, like I said, hard but also amazing uh, experience for me. And it took about a year to write and um, then publishing after that. Um, but I, ha I was always trying to surround myself by people who were also in the same writing process so that I wasn't alone. So I think community is huge there, too. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because uh, I know people I've talked with that have written books, what a what a process it is and the mountaintops and the valleys that yeah. you go through. But for people that are listening and they hear, okay, you wrote this book, uh, Ascent to Hope, The Rugged Climb from Fear of Faith, uh, who, who should read this book and uh, and why? Why should they read it, Stephanie? You know, well, first off, if you know if you ha do have a loved one who's struggling with addiction, um, I think this book is absolutely for you. Um, but what I've been surprised about is the number of people who have uh, given me feedback about that their parenting has been challenged, that their marriage relationship has been challenged, that their prayer life has been challenged, um, and really establishing that vertical relationship and seeing how judgmental they are of other people. Um, so I think a lot of it has to do with control. So if you're if a person that you feel like you struggle with letting go of things um, and uh, letting God take uh, the lead, then this book was probably for you too. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot of audience, different audiences that, that could benefit from it for sure. All right. Well, we hope you'll stay with us over the next couple of days. We are going to talk some more with Stephanie. Uh, we're going to be talking about topics such as life's unresolved problems can help us let go, uh, control, and walk into a deeper relationship of surrender and relationship with God. And then we're also going to talk uh, on our third program about when God asks us to give up control, he will replace that with exactly what we need, fear to faith, hopelessness to hope. So I hope that you'll stay with us. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation with Stephanie Winslow. If you're like, man, I, I need a copy of this book. This book is for me or for a friend or loved one. I want to encourage you to go to her website. It's www.ascenttohope.com. That's ascenttohope.com. The book is called Ascent to Hope, The Rugged Climb from Fear to Faith. I think you'd really be by, blessed by it, so I hope that you will check that out. And hope you'll stay with us and tell a friend to join us uh, for Hope is Here. If you just tuned in and you're like, man, I wish I'd heard the first part of this, you can always catch our podcast. That's available on our website. That's at hopeishere.today. That's hopeishere.today. I'm Greg Horn. Tune in tomorrow as we'll continue our conversation with Stephanie Winslow on Hope is Here. CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com.